Okay, let's take a look at this process costing problem dealing with weighted average and also it considers spoilage. It's problem 1821. Appleton Company makes wooden toys in its forming department and then uses the weighted average method of process costing. All direct materials are added at the beginning of the process and conversion costs are added evenly during the process. Spoiled units are detected upon inspection at the end of the process and they're disposed of at a zero net disposal value. And then we have some summary data from August and that's all the information here. This is all the summary data. And we have three requirements. First, for each cost category, calculate equivalent units. Show physical units in the first column of your schedule. And requirement two says, we'll then calculate the cost per equivalent unit. And requirement three, we'll summarize the cost and we'll assign those costs to units completed and transferred out, including normal spoilage, to abnormal spoilage, and to units in ending work in process. Okay. So uh, I've staged just a little bit below, so let me slide up. Hopefully we won't use our data. And we'll tackle step one first, which deals with the physical units. Okay, and this, uh, let's just see where we get the information from. Work in process beginning was given above. So we just referenced the 2,000 units and started during the current period is, was also given is 10,000 units. Okay, so if we have that number of units, then we can simply sum from above, and we come up with 12,000 units to account for. And that's part of step one. Then we also need to figure what were the goods, units completed, and transfers out. And we know that has to equal the 12,000. Okay, so let's look at our data. Um, normal spoilage is 10%. So um, our normal spo spoilage amount is going to be equal, let's see if we can calculate this here. Uh, oh, first let's figure out what the goods completed and were transferred out were. And that's the 9,000 that's given above. And then normal spoilage is given at 10%, so we'll take the 9,000 uh, times the 10%, and we come up with normal spoilage. Okay. Now, in terms of abnormal spoil spoilage, let's see what we can find. Okay, they don't specifically say what's the abnormal spoilage, but I think we can work backwards. We know we need to account for 12,000 units in total. We know that normal spo spoilage was 10% of whatever was completed and transferred out. And the work in process in ending inventory was equal to 1,800 units. Okay, so if we work backwards, then if we take the 12,000, right, less the sum of the other values, which is those two, um, and let me move this, I've got to add in the 1,800 too, so um, less the sum of B32, B32, um, actually, why don't I just do this, minus what was in this cell, what was in this cell, and what was in that cell. And I think that gives us the, the, the simplest formula there that you can see just to the left of where I'm moving my mouse. And if we come up with that, if we do it that way, we solve for the unknown. And what we've determined is the abnormal spoilage was 300 units. Okay, we'll underline this and, f and grab this cell to format that using the Format Painter. And we've now accounted for step one in its entirety. Okay, sliding back up, step two to the left of my mouse says, for each cost category, um, calculate the per equivalent unit. Okay, well, let's bring these to light now. And again, I've staged this ahead of time, so uh, let me bring this color to light. We get step two as equivalent units, and we're going to do it for direct material and conversion cost. Okay. Well, they told us the materials go in at the uh, the beginning of the year, the beginning of the period, right? And conversions costs occur evenly throughout the process. So, of the 9,000 uh, completed and, care and and transferred out, we always know that that is always equal to the physical units, right? So, I'll just type in that 9,000, both in terms of direct materials and conversion costs. Um, normal spoilage 
if the if we have spoilage and we know that materials are at, added at the beginning then we've had 900 physical units or equivalent units of spoilage and um, if we detect spoilage at the end pro end of the process then at that point we've already incur incurred the value added which is the the conversion cost of labor and overhead to turn uh, the units into uh, into uh, the next stage in the production process so all all of those units also would be considered normal sp spoilage now that also explains abnormal spoilage as well um, if there is spoilage of any kind we don't detect it to the end so therefore since materials were added at the beginning and we don't detect it until we're end we, we've ended the process we consider all of those units to, um, to be spoiled whether they were normal normally spoiled or abnormally spoiled okay work in process ending we're certainly going to have all of the equivalent units of material since it gets added at the beginning but the conversion cost is going to be different and in this example um, I think the data they gave us was 70 percent so we would take um, the 1800 physical units times that 75 uh, percent right there degree of completion we come up with 1350 and now we can sum down and we come up with the equivalent uh, units oh actually this one since we worked the other one backwards it wasn't a sum but we'll just put a sum in here so we have 12,000 for direct material equivalent units 11,550 for for conversion cost that takes care of step two alright step three says Summarize total cost to account for and assign total cost to units completed and transferred out. Okay, so now we deal with the dollars. Um, let me slide down and see if I've got uh, any of this uh, done ahead of time. Uh, yeah, so let's take let's let's just drop in some information I put ahead of time. We'll work on step three. We start off with the work in process. Um, what was given? What was given is our beginning dollars. And um, uh, now I need to find where that information is given. All right, so we slide up, and right there is our work in process 17.7 and 10.9. So if we sum those, we come up with the total amount of uh, direct materials. But uh, you know, I'll do it the slow way here. What I'm going to do is bring in this amount here. You, you know what? I want to let's copy these as titles first. I think it'll make it a little bit easier for us to follow. And then this will be total production cost down here. Um, okay, so these are all costs now. So work in process, we will grab from the information given at that cell. And I know when I slide, it's a little hard to follow. Uh, but I don't have much screen real estate to work with, so do it the best we can. Let's see if oh, that wants to sum from the wrong way. So this time I have to get it started and the sum would be from those cells right there 286 that's the right amount let me slide down okay cost added in the current period and we get that information here um, and it's already it's already uh, gathered for us in the general ledger I mean that's where assume where we assume the data comes from and we're capturing it by what we buy and, and using separate accounts so that way we're able to separate this data now, in a textbook problem, uh, they simply have to give that to you some way, and that's what they've done. They've given it to you here. All right, and then I can sum that again. Um, and so we've got uh, 174,300. Let me make sure that's correct. That looks right. So cost incurred to date. Um, uh, we could sum down if we wanted to. Oh, first off, I wonder why that format uh, is off. Let me do it this way. Ooh, there's a error there. Okay, now I'm going to just sum from above and draw my little underline. So we get 99 and 103, that's correct. Then we need to, and this is all part of step three, divide by the equivalent units so that we can come up with um, a cost per equivalent unit. Okay, so I'm going to call this divide by equivalent units. I'm not even. I'm going to take that out of there and just and just say this will be cost per equivalent units. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm going to take that cost, divided it by the equivalent units, units above. I see I have to add an underline here. Okay, so I've got 825. I'll copy that there, and um, we get uh, $9. I think both of these are uh, maybe rounded. The 825 may be exact, but I think that one actually is rounding. That's okay. So now we've got to make sure we've tackled all the total cost uh, to account for. So again, I'm going to put a zero here and put an underline just so we can get uh, an underline, even though really we only have the costs incurred in those two cells, if you will. Um, Everything else is a subtotal or a calculation. So we, we know we've got to get down to 202,900, and right there is the cost per equivalent unit that we need. Okay. So step four was to determine um, the costs to account for in the division. Now we go on to step five, which is the assignment of the cost. So let me slide down. Let's give us a little bit of room. I don't think I've, oh, I, you know, I guess I have worked some of this out as well. Okay, so good, good units completed and transfer out is the first item we need to come up with. And um, um, we know we had 9,000 units. Okay, so what I think all I want to do is jot that down if there was 9,000 units, right? And it comes from right there. But we don't need to actually enter that in our schedule. Now, cost before adding spoilage, we do have to enter. And the cost before adding spoilage would be equal to, um, if I do this right, the 9,000 units... times the equivalent unit, the cost per equivalent unit. See where I'm pulling that from? We've done that calculation because we need it in this calculation here. So let me uh, copy that, then um, actually have to lock in. Uh, no, I, since I put the 9,000 across, we can add that and sum across. So I can copy from this cell. Because I think that was a sum across, and I come up with 155 to 11. Okay, then we need to account for the cost of normal spoilage. Now, normal spoilage was 900 units. I'll jot that in as well. You really don't need to, but I'll put it in so we see it. Okay, so then we have to take the 900 units of no normal spoilage times that cost per equivalent unit. Okay, and. Um, you know, in all of these, we don't need the sense when we're dealing with this. So, yeah, format this down here as we get going here. And then I can copy that over, and again, we'll take the 900 times the $9. And now we've come up with 15521 is normal spoilage. So now we've come up with the total cost of goods units completed and transferred out because we consider normal sport spoilage to be part of our regular production cost. And I think I just need to uh, format that. Oh, look at that. This doesn't want to format correctly. Let me just do this. Much better. And we'll sum from above. Okay, and I'll copy that over. Now, I could have done all three of those in, in one uh, a cell if we needed to. Actually, we don't even need these totals here because that's the dollar amount that you would need now to make a journal entry to transfer work and process into finished goods. In fact, if I have time, I want to uh, make a point at the end of this demo to say, what's, why do we go to all this effort? But first, let's do the abnormal spoilage. Abnormal spoilage, we take the 300 units, and by now you understand the trick, right? Times the cost per equivalent unit that we did before, multiply across. Um, add across, um, and the difference is work in process ending, right? And again, we could work this backwards, or you could, uh, you know, you could take the 202. Now that you're down to one unknown, uh, add that here, and then force the work in process backward. But we really don't need to do that. Uh, instead, we can take what we had in work in process and equivalent units times the cost per equivalent unit, 
multiply that across and drop that in there. Uh, it doesn't look I don't think I need an underline here. And if I've done this correctly, we should have accounted for uh, all the costs to account for. Uh, B50 to B52 looks right. 202900, see how that number matches that number. So because those two numbers match, uh, I know we've done this one correctly. And um, that takes care of um, step five. Uh, total. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't need that to say step four. That's just our check figure so that that equals that. And that really is all there is to this problem. Um, now, quickly, why do we do all this? Well, the whole point is so that we can make various journal entries. And I just want to illustrate one. Since we went to all this effort to come up with that number there, the total cost of goods completed and transferred, the whole point of this is to make this entry. I'm going to slide up, and we're going to debit something called... The, I'm going to assume this is the last stage. I think they even said that in the problem, but I, I'm not going to go back and read it. To make this entry. The whole reason we do this is so that at the end of the month, we can debit finished goods for the proper amount, 177.32, and credit work in process. Now, this assumes that this is the last stage of uh, the production process, right? And that's just one example that we would use this report for, so that we can correctly value inventory at the end of the period. If by chance this particular department was just one stage in the process, then what we might have is something like this, work in process stage one, and it may have a unique name, something like fabricating. And then we might have a debit to something like work in process finishing, you know, whatever the next name of that step is. Okay, so again, we would we may need to produce an equivalent unit schedule like this for every stage in the production process. All right, that's this problem, everyone. Let me slide back up so you can see the heading. And I thank you for watching.